Hey everybody, welcome back to Reach Out Reptiles. My name is Garrett Hartle, and I'm just gonna get a little bit snarky in this week's video as we talk about five things that potential buyers do that reptile breeders can't stand. So we reptile breeders always um, get to listen to what everybody, especially on social media, thinks that we could do better. In this week's video, you guys are gonna get told by me what you can do better. Unless, of course, you click off the video. But don't click off the video. Or uh, as Gary Shavino says, Nobody's gonna like you. You're gonna spend holidays alone, birthdays alone. Nobody's ever gonna share their Chick-fil-A sandwich with you. So you're gonna end up hungry and alone. And eventually, you're gonna die alone. Now, before we get started, we love you guys. I have one of the best communities that supports Reach Out Reptiles. I think out of any reptile business anywhere. I just wanted to have a little bit of uh, Grinchy Christmas fun with you guys, so buckle up and enjoy. Okay, first things first, point number one, don't come into a conversation knowing more than your breeder. See, the thing about it is a lot of us have done a lot of different things. There's many ways and philosophies to keep a snake. You know, they're not all equal, but a lot of them can be equally good. But bear this in mind, let's say maybe you've been on a Facebook forum doing tons of research. You have one level of experience. Let's say that you have maybe bred one snake, you've gotten one clutch of a certain snake a year, you have that same experience. But a breeder that has done 50 or 100 clutches in that same one year, it's gonna take you 50 or 100 years to get the same level of experience. So even though I may not always be right, it's kind of rude just to call someone to tell them that they're wrong. And it also makes it so that you can't learn from any possible experience they have that might be different to yours to help you level up your keeping experience. Let's move on to point number two. All right, point number two. Now, obviously, our entire goal is to help you find exactly the right snake. So point number two is, you gotta let us know what you want. Have some kind of an idea before you reach out. Do you want the snake as a pet? Is it something you're gonna breed someday? What's a ballpark budget? I know a lot of people kinda come to us with this attitude of like, tell me what I wanna hear and if you're right, I'll buy from you. But I actually wanna help you. We have a huge variety of animals, all prices, all sizes, different temperaments, good for different things, and I wanna find the one that's right for you. So come to me with an idea of what you actually want. That would be very helpful to kinda kick off the beginning of a reptile breeder, reptile buyer relationship, and that would be awesome. All right, let's go check out point number three. Now, point number three, I kind of know where this comes from. In our industry, you have as many professional businesses working on stuff as you have, you know, private hobbyists and breeders and things like that. So there aren't really any expectations. But what drives reptile breeders crazy is when you expect like the policies or prices of other breeders from different businesses. This goes way beyond saying like, oh, this snake is worth more than that snake or whatever but uh, things like payment plans. It's amazing what you can get away with from certain sellers in the industry because this isn't their job. You, they're like, it's fine, pay me as you can over the next three years and I fully expect you to pay me. You can't get that from like a, a real business, reptile breeding business or something like that. Another one would be, so-and-so said that they would send me this snake to this area that's illegal, so you should do it too. I don't think it's fair to expect from your professional reptile breeder who's doing a good job trying to bring you the highest quality animals, has different economies, expenses, and things into that higher level of quality and production than you know somebody that's trying to sell the pet that they regret buying is going to have. All right, point number four is requiring or even demanding customer service from someone that you're not a customer of. This is kind of a complicated point, but let me explain it this way. Uh, my friend Eric over at NPR always says, you vote with your dollar who stays and who goes in this industry. So 
If you were to come and say, Garrett, I've watched all your videos. You got me excited about Superdorfs. You taught me so much. And then I bought from this guy that happened to be at a local reptile show instead. It's a little ugh, twist of the knife. I want everybody to love and enjoy a Superdorf. But if you're like, hey, you know, you're very educational. But meanwhile, this guy misrepresented something or misled me in what I bought. Uh, I, I want to be happy for you, but I can't. You know, or if it's like, hey, you do so much for the industry. And then I found out that this guy is kind of a backbiter and cutthroat. Uh, you know, gosh, that hurts. Or, oh my gosh, I love how much you love the animals. You love the people and you're trying to build the industry. But instead I bought from this guy that I found out later has like really poor husbandry. And it really just kind of got into it for the love of the mighty almighty dollar. Ugh, man, as a breeder, that hurts because you are financially making it easier for that person to continue doing what they do and harder for us. In other words, it's like you should appreciate who you appreciate in the industry and depreciate the people that you don't. You don't have to be negative towards them or anything like that, but definitely don't financially support decisions that they're making that you don't agree with. Let's go on to point number five. Okay, point number five, this is one that comes up every holiday, is just your expectations of response time. Here at Reach Out Reptiles, we work nine to 5.30, Monday to Friday. We don't really work weekends, we don't work holidays. As kind of a small, you know, reptile shop, we enjoy having that time to ourselves and with our families. For some reason, I don't know why this is, but every Christmas I get 30 to 60 texts about inquiries and things. I think it might just be because people got some money for Christmas and they're excited and can't wait to pick out their new Christmas super dwarf. But those texts are coming in as I'm trying to have my Christmas dinner or watch my kids open their presents. Another fun example, we had someone on a Friday night right after we closed up shop and went home, text us with an inquiry about how excited they were. We didn't have time to answer that as our, we were on our way out the door, they had a lot of complicated questions. By the time I came back in on Monday, there had been a string of about 10 more emails wondering why we hadn't responded. They then assumed that we looked down on them or thought they weren't qualified to own one of our pets. And obviously that struck them the wrong way. So by Monday morning, they hated us for being so judgy of them in their inability to properly care for a super dwarf. And I was just thinking, thinking, gee, you know, I was traveling this weekend. <laughs> I'm sorry I didn't get to answer that. And some people in the industry will answer you right away and that's great, but I think that that's a, an additional courtesy for them to answer you during nights, weekends, what people typically use as personal time. It's, uh, you know, it's not an 800 number. Something to bear in mind. You know, I actually thought about hiring somebody to answer phones, nights, weekends, holiday, you know, kind of like an overseas answering thing, someone with a really thick accent that was well-trained and gave all the right information for people who needed that immediate response or that 1 a.m. response to their question about super doors. I thought it might be kind of cool because people who needed immediate responses would get them and people who wanted, you know, Garrett or someone here at Reach Out Reptiles to answer them would say, you know, hey, I'd rather wait and get the information there. How do you guys think that would go over? Good idea, bad idea? I would just like to say, little bonus, if you actually do want your reptile breeder to know how much you love them, besides you know buying something from them or whatever, probably the best thing you can ever do to support somebody who's in this kind of new, growing, figuring it out reptile industry is just brag about what you like about them online. I think that's the best thing that we can do. I am curious though, did you guys have fun with this video? Do you disagree with me? What are, what are some of the most annoying things that reptile breeders do? Uh, or have you as a breeder related to one of these things? Let me know in the comments below. And this week's video was brought to you by Ship Your Reptiles. Probably some of the best customer service in the reptile industry hands down.